Yeah, some people get really weirded out when you say, like, I'm fascinated with murder. I have always been interested and anxious with the idea of something bad happening to me, like from as young as I can remember. But I was able to put like the title true crime on it probably around middle school when um, that website that showed you the sexual predators around you came out. My mom uh, was always into true crime. She had a copy of this true crime account of the Jonestown massacre. <laughs> And when I was 10 was when they did uh, the Ted Bundy miniseries that had Mark Harmon in it. And I was hooked on the miniseries, which I was way too young to watch. <laughs> when I was probably in junior high, there was this horrible murder in Chicago. The um, nurses that were murdered by that crazy guy, he killed like eight nurses in a dorm. I guess we saw it on the news and he was not captured. They didn't know who had done it. And, and I was terrified that night in my bed in, in the little town that I lived in in Virginia that this crazy guy was gonna come down and get me. So much that I went and put, got a knife from the kitchen and put it underneath my pillow. I am definitely a, what they call a murderino. And I'm a murderino. And I'm a murderino. And I'm a murderino. And I'm a murderino. I would define murderino as not so much a fan as like a member of this community that's obsessed with murder, but not not in the ways that you might assume. It's a community of people interested in true crime. Murderino is to me a person who is worried somewhat about their safety and enjoys kind of rehashing old events, old murders. Um, because it kind of eases their anxiety, I think. For most people that I've connected with, it has grown from a pre-existing anxiety or uh, a pre-existing fascination or worry with being murdered yourself or like being harmed. One of the main misconceptions is that we like don't care about the victims, especially when you say like, I'm so into murder. It obviously sounds like we support or like enjoy the murdering and that's not at all what it is that enjoyment of like researching and hearing all of these tales is more so from a perspective of educating yourself and then being able to sympathize with survivors and being able to think well if this had been different maybe they would still be here and what can we do to prevent that from happening the next time i could have started the murdering house. i just didn't think other people were as into it as i am but i was sorely mistaken so a murderino is someone who is a fan of the My Favorite Murder podcast. Hey, this is My Favorite Murder. That's Karen. That's right. That's Georgia. That's right. And this is a podcast where we talk to you about murders that have happened. So I would describe My Favorite Murder as a comedy murder podcast, which is just as inappropriate as it sounds, but in the most glorious ways. And I remember my daughter, when she was trying to introduce me to it, she says, well, these two girls, and they sit and talk to each other about murders. And I'm, I was like, what? <laughs> that is bizarre. SSDGM stands for Stay Sexy, Don't Get Murdered, which is like the tagline of My Favorite Murder. There's two female host, each one reads uh, a, a story about a, a true crime, they try to describe it, but you know, they have a really great banter. So in addition to telling different murder stories every episode, it's also funny and lighthearted in a way that makes it easy to cope with the anxiety of death and things like that. One of the mantras that means the most to me from MFM is definitely fuck politeness. Fuck politeness. Fuck politeness. Fuck politeness is one of my Favorite. I have a mug. I know. Says, Women are raised to be polite. We're brought up to do nice things for people, to help people, which obviously, yes, we need to do that. But it can also be used to trick you into getting into an unsafe situation. And there have been many instances where that has gotten me into bad situations where I wouldn't trust my intuition. I thought my children to be polite, but I see now that that's 
Not always good, obviously. <laughs> like Georgia says, pepper spray first and apologize later. You know, if they didn't mean any harm to you, that's fine. But if they did, guess what? They just got a, you know, face full of pepper spray. But if you have a bad feeling, then trust your bad feelings. So the hosts of My Favorite Murder are Georgia Hardstark and Karen Kilgareth. They look exactly like what I pictured in my head. They're so relatable. So most people say, are you a Karen or are you a Georgia? That's, you know, most people ask that. Karen uh, has, from my understanding, worked in TV and comedy and things like that. So going into the podcast, she really already had like a sense of how to implement the funny in a good way. They just seem like everyday relatable people. If they just seem like just like girlfriend or someone that you would just meet that you would really want to be friends with. The first officer on the stairs sees a white marble in on the stair in front of him. <gasps> so he leans down to pick it up. It's an eyeball. Yes, 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 yes. We're off to the races. No, ew. It's a human eyeball. No, no, no. And looking up at it. I think it's their interaction and their friendship is why it's it's so insane. It's like you're just like listening to your girlfriends. And because they are so open about all of their issues, their addictions, their their past traumas, it's it really is like you are getting to know someone on a personal level. And one of the things that they're really lauded for is bringing awareness about mental illness, especially anxiety and depression, because both host Georgia and Karen have dealt with that. And so in the Facebook groups, you know, we're sharing that when you're being each other's literal support. Mental illness is very isolating. So that that's a thing that was really so nice to me to find. They talk yeah. so openly about therapy mm -hmm. that, you know, if you go to any of like the online groups, people talk about how they went to therapy just because they felt they could from watching and listening to the podcast. So I think that's pretty awesome. I have severe anxiety and seasonal depression um, and MFM has actually been like paramount in my overcoming those challenges it got me to go to therapy so when you don't want to hear the anxious voices in your head i just i call them my aunties i put on <laughs> my favorite murder and i just listen to my aunties talk generally too just about things that give you anxiety i think it's beneficial to talk about those things because everybody feels anxiety and if other people are talking about it then you realize that you're not alone i'm actively trying to overcome personal obstacles while going through this avenue of infatuation with researching murders and like learning the tips and tricks on how to be safer and just having this community that is there for you and is so judgment free. There's also been a lot of times where I've gained friends from Facebook groups or meetups or, you know, different events if they see like my favorite murder shirt or something like that or if I see someone with a SSD GM tattoo then it's just like instant best friends. <laughs> so we are at Hardywood Brewery where we've met once before. This is the RBA Murderito group. Uh, we meet about every week for various activities mostly involving drinking um, and murder but not real. <laughs> well this is all forever. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. Like, never. like murderinos are cool people. They're amazing. So I had to move so fast. I had essentially I had to get into my apartment and get all my stuff out within four hours. He came up and like basically like was screaming at his like tried to threaten me and I was like I put out the call. I was like I have to move like right now. Like I have to leave my apartment. I think it was like one of those things. In the right right now. Like murderinos were just like I didn't even know these people really. I mean. Most of the people that showed up, I didn't know. I mean, they were just like, yeah, sure. And they came to my apartment and they boxed all my shit and we moved out of my apartment. Like, it was just like, murderinos, like, murderinos know what's up. They're like, cool, I'll do it. And they came and they were just like, is this yours? Shove it in a box. Shove it. I remember you standing there support we were dating. You don't need this book. You don't need this book either. We're just, we're just throwing everything in. Like, for me, like, murderinos have surprised me for always the better. I think that example is like the best. You know, everyone has the same base instincts to, I guess, be afraid of something bad happening to them. And it's like this community is a protection from that. It's not that we're weird, it's that, you know, we all love each other in some weird way. Stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, you want a cookie?